Hey guys, it's Adrian here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my tip for update 7.0. So with Nitro Unit and Orochi in the game, how do you stop these fast moving robots? So this is going to be focused more around weapons, but one of the best ways to counter a fast moving robot is by using a lockdown weapon. So what kind of weapons are we talking about? Let's just take a look at the uh, workshop here. So um, weapons such as the Shredder weapon, okay, Halo, um, Glory, Corona, and also Pulsar. So I think my favorite out of those is probably Pulsar and Shredder weapons, but they are very effective at locking down uh, players uh, that are moving fast. So if it's a Rochi, if it's a Phantom, um, a Blitz, a Loki, uh, those weapons are very effective at uh, slowing them down. Uh, there's also an active module called Lockdown Ammo, which is this module over here. And you can basically turn any weapon into a lockdown weapon uh, using this module. So for example, uh, the leech with punishes, you can lock players down using something like this as well. And uh, lastly, there are certain weapons which can trigger, uh, you know, a drone chip. So this chip over here, we're going to take a look at it. So this chip over here is called lockdown. So it enables all robots weapons to apply lockdown. There are certain weapons which can actually trigger this quicker. So I'm going to show you right now in the workshop which weapons those are. Okay, so weapons such as Glacier, Cryo, Rhyme, um, Shredder, Halo, Glory, Corona, um, Pulsar, and even to some extent the Exodus. But those weapons work really well at applying any kind of effect chips, uh, whether it be Lockdowner, Suppressor, Freezer, they all work really well. And, um, you know, that's going to help you to more effectively lock down players, especially fast moving robots like the Orochi. So that's my very short guide on how to stop fast moving robots like the Orochi. Thanks for watching my update 7.0 tip. Hey everyone, this is Manny and my War Robots tip for you is the pilot skill Deft Survivor and Clever Survivor. Those work on many robots, Invader, Pursuer, Blitz, even the Orochi and Dash bots, right? And what it does is it provides you with an extra ready ability once your robot goes below 50% health in combat. Uh, either an ability charge on robots that have multiple charges or it just reactivates the ability used on for example the mender the blitz or pursuer like you have seen here on the blitz robot and uh, you'll see here on clive fishes the pilot for blitz it's called Cle uh, death survivor and it doesn't even have to be upgraded to have the same effect and on the orochi it would be called clever survivor uh, and here you'll see an example from the orochi uh, as i said those, those are by far the most important skills you can ever choose for any robot uh, they are basically a must must have uh, and uh, yeah so something you should definitely equip as a first thing uh, on your pilot and uh, no matter how many more skills you may have down below that must be among them hey what's up everybody Danny lightning here from the lightning WR YouTube channel today we're gonna talk about some game tips about playing against Orochi which is the new crazy robot that goes into stealth for long periods of time so we're going to talk about how to take this guy out first off this robot's pretty squishy so he's not that hard to kill which is really good news and there's quite a few things that you're going to be able to do to fight against this guy so number one all right there's a module that you can put on any robot which is really great for fighting orochis if you throw one of these quantum raiders on there he goes into that ability you hit your power cells and bam, all of a sudden you can target this guy and trash him and take him out pretty quickly. So this is a great way to fight against Orochi right here. All right, Ao Jun with a Yang Li pilot. We might see Ao Jun's making a pretty big comeback, all right? Once he goes into his ability, you can go into to your uh, Ao Jun's ability if you have the Yang Li pilot and bam, you can target people in stealth. This is a awesome setup for that, all right? definitely a good thing here there's actual a module you can put on your titans called the quantum sensor and if you level this up all right you'll have 350 meter range of anti-stealth so if that orochi comes within 350 meters of you while well, you have this module equipped on your titan hey you're going to be able to target him and smash him to pieces fast Titans like kid, if that Orochi gets close to you, you can put on that ring of fire and it'll start burning that that tight that Orochi up whether or not it's in stealth. 
Arthur has that big old blast wave. So if a Rochi gets close to you, you hit him with that blast wave and bam, you got him. You got him. Minos, he's got an ability where you can just run right into Rochi and hit him with your blast wave and take him out pretty quickly. Shell is another one of those robots that's got a really awesome blast wave. You can just run up to that Orochi, use that blast wave, and blow him up into little pieces. So Shell's great for fighting Orochis. So those are a lot of the things that are really going to help you fight against the Orochi. When the enemy team is coming at you with a bunch of Orochis, anti-stealth is your friend, or anything with some sort of blast wave that you can still hit them in when they're in stealth. All right? Hopefully. My tip for update 7.0 is about how to counter shells in the most effective way you can. We need a combination of three things to make countering shells a lot easier. One, a swift robot that is relatively fast or with an ability that can evade tough situations like Blitz, Nightingale, Phantom, etc. Two, flamethrower weapons or their hybrid rocket versions to use with our robot, for example Blaze, Scald, Ember, etc. 3. Active Module Lockdown Ammo and 4. Preferably slash optionally a drone combo with modulative intensifier plus suppressor chip combinations. Flamethrower weapons have a decent ammo capacity with a high damage per clip and high damage per second as well, combined with a short reload. And they completely bypass physical shields which is the primary aspect in countering shells. However, when using them you can miss quite a few shots due to their respective firing mechanisms. We solve this issue by using lockdown ammo which stops the movement of any robot not equipped with passive module anti-control. And lastly, this category of weapons fills A-type drone chip effects relatively fast. With suppressor chips used you can stay focused on your target longer while his or her damage output is suppressed by a huge margin. This was my short tip for countering shells, I hope it was helpful. Hello everyone, Islander here. And my tip for update 7.0 is how to counter the Sharanga. Sharanga is the newest Titan on the battlefield. It has three alpha weapons and two abilities, full power and phase exile. The trick here is to try to get him to use those both abilities on you, using your speed to come in and out of the fight, and then finishing them off using the ability of your own, the refractor. That being said, let's jump into this match. Okay, in this scenario, we are set up with a 1v1. I will be using my speed to get in and out, forcing him to use his abilities. There's one right there. Now we'll turn on the refractor, move in. Fall back and take advantage of our corner shooting now. We have him exactly where we want him. We don't need to go out where he can go ahead and take the advantage back from us. No matter what side he goes to, we will use the corner shooting. And he's trapped. There's his refractor, he's moving. I'm sorry, there's his uh, phase ability. We use ours, move in. Double ability, and the counter is effective. Guys, you can use this uh, tip. It also works very w well if the Sharanga is focused on one of your teammates and he has used both of those abilities. You can move in very fast from the outside, cover the distance, close the gap, and tear them up from behind. Once they've used those abilities, they are very, very vulnerable. Guys, I hope this tip helps you out and good luck on the battlefield. Hey, what's up everyone? This is AD Gaming and here is my tip for the 7.0 update. I'm gonna talk about the importance of healers in the game. It is really important to, to use at, at least one healer in every hunger and I'm gonna explain you why. First of all, it is really helpful for your teammates to have, if you have on your team, a healer, if it's a Demeter or a Bender or a Tyr, it is really important and it sometimes can help you even to win games, okay? And another thing why it's so important because it also give you more points, more honor points and that means more silver, okay? So this is a little tip about the healers and actually, personally, I really like the healers, the Mender and the Demeter especially. I really like to heal my friends and to save them so just wanted to share it with you and that's it and until next time have a good day
flash night. Hey everyone, this is Justice. My WR tip for the 7.0 update is to consider factoring in reload times when building any bot. Here we'll look at an example of a Hawk built with a beautiful hybrid incinerator, 500 meter range, blast charge effect, and a 12 second reload. And although it may seem like a minor detail, waiting for any heavy weapon to fully reload after 12 seconds can be challenging. Let's look at the light version of this weapon, the Scald, 500 meter range, the blast charge effect. However, what's different here is a six second reload. Interesting. What if we were to pair this with a different heavy weapon? using the same example of the Hawk. This time we'll build it with Avalanche. Next, let's take a look at the specs of the Avalanche. Same 500 meter range, plenty of firepower like the Incinerator. This does have splash damage, it can do damage to physical shields, and it has the same six second reload as a Scald. And to reiterate, you may like the functionality or the mechanics of how this build works in the field. Here's a small demo on the new Abyss map. After numerous tests on the Battle Wreck account, and as much as I love the Incinerator, it seems overall matching Avalanche with the Skull will yield better results in more matches in all the maps. And it works well in congru congruence with the Transform Beam. And it will have a full salvo when you land, just like if you had Incinerator and Skull. It's just after the fact, when you release the full salvo, it's just the way it reloads. You have plenty of projectiles and missiles, to get through those shields, get to the cloaking units. And now, with the new F-type shields, reload times may even be more important to get those beautiful rampages that we love so much. And even if you don't have a full salvo, just the way this reloads, still enough to do significant damage until your transform beam is available once again. This is my WR tip for the 7.0 update. Wishing you the best for your hangers. Bring justice to your life in 2021. Justice out. Hey gente, estamos acá visitando nuevamente el canal del juego. Te voy a dar unos consejos bastante suculentos en esta actualización 7.0. Algunos son básicos como este. Obtén los 5 espacios de tu hangar, pero concentra a tu esfuerzo en equipar 3 opciones que te sean efectivas. No tiene que ser la meta, pero sí tienen que ser efectivos. Y también en un solo titán. Ojo con eso. En los eventos, trata de ganar AU o algunos ítems en los cofres que valgan AU. Si obtienes bastante AU, puedes comprar módulos pasivos competitivos como el Asestan. No cambies de titán, pero sí de armas y de módulos. Una equivocación que estoy viendo actualmente, muchos jugadores tienen un minus tienen un Arthur, tienen un Aumin, todos a nivel 20, 30 y 40, pero no son competitivos. Eso es una equivocación. Concentra todo el PT en un solo titán que te sea efectivo. Y si ves que las armas no son buenas, las puedes ir cambiando. El Arthur antes era muy bueno con las metralletas y actualmente es súper letal con las escopetas. Así que bueno, coge consejo. Juegate el server. Haz un video y súbelo a tu canal. Quizás no sabes esto, pero si haces eso y llenas el formulario del test server, te van a regalar 400 de AU. Y a veces hay dos test server en la misma semana. Así que bueno, saca cuentas y dime si eso te conviene. Finalmente, no te centres solo en obtener y subir de nivel las armas y los robots que son meta. Este juego siempre les da balance a lo nuevo. Así que bueno, guerra avisada no mata soldado. ¿Cuál es la opción que te voy a dar en este video? Te voy a dar la opción de este robot que está en el taller. Muy bueno y competitivo. ¿Qué armas son las que yo te recomiendo? Igniter y Rhyme. Súper efectivas en contra del Shell y el Tifon. Que son dos enemigos actuales en la meta. ¿Qué módulos te voy a decir? Bueno, el primero va a ser... Heavy Armor Kit y el segundo va a ser unidad de reparación o unidad de reparación avanzada. La combinación de estos dos vuelven un super tanque al Phantom. Finalmente, el piloto, sí que te digo que el piloto legendario es bueno, pero estas dos habilidades son súper geniales. Experto en blindaje y conductor agresivo. Más durabilidad y más velocidad. Ojo, yo sé que quizás no te interese mucho este tema, pero te lo voy a decir porque hay gente que me pregunta ¿Cuál es el microchip que me sirve 
para que mi tanque se vuelva un super tanque. Bueno, esta que está acá se llama Revitalizing Defender. Si tú utilizas el módulo activo Reparación Avanzada, te va a dar, ojo con esto, 45 puntos de defensa durante 10 segundos. Una locura, súper, súper efectivo. Así que te recomiendo este microchip para tus tanques o los robots que son viejos. Este otro microchip es totalmente nuevo. Está en los cofres del evento y te lo recomiendo porque no sé si te has topado actualmente con alguien que lo atacas, se activa un escudo absorbente, lo vuelves a atacar, se activa otra vez el escudo. Bueno, el amigo que causa eso es esto que está acá. Súper, súper efectivo en los tanques. Porque un tanque como el Falcon va a recibir mucho fuego enemigo y este microchip se va a activar varias veces dándote una oportunidad de aguantar más daño. Bueno, me despido. No se te olvide darle like al video y pasarte por el canal de Pinceladas. Bye bye gente.